Hi everyone. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Miss Hu, your physics teacher. So in this video, we will be discussing the answers to the linear motion graphs in this book, the module and more book, Physics Form 4, uh, focusing on Chonto 6 and 7 on pages 32 and 33. So I'm going to move my face out of the way and let's get started. So um, please remember though that the purpose of this video is to discuss the answers and not to share questions. So by right, you should have a copy of your own book, work on it. You can refer to this video for the answers. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Let's look at Chonto 6. So um, in the in this particular graph, okay, uh, they want you to, whoops, let me reconnect my tablet, it's not working. Okay, there we go. All right, so, um, sorry, before we get started, uh, I'd like to remind students, right, that every time you have a graph question, don't just start reading the question straight away. You know, the first thing you should always do when you look at the graph, okay, don't just like start answering the question. First thing you do is always look at what's on the y-axis and x-axis. Be aware of what the graph is telling you. So in this case, the question told us is a displacement time graph, okay? That means displacement time, this is displacement, this is time. The graph is showing us the location or the position of the object with time. So it's not showing you the speed of the object, it's showing you where the object is located throughout this time, okay? So once we know what this graph is uh, representing, then we also uh, can take further interpretation. If you recall for a displacement time graph, additional information which you can obtain is that the velocity can be calculated based on the gradient. If you don't remember this, please refer to my other video, which uh, is the explanation on linear motion graphs, right? In this case, I'm just going to go straight to how to solve the question. So if we want to determine the velocity, or in this case, calculate the velocity of an object, you can do so from the gradient. All other information should be um, uh, obtained from the graph itself. Um, if it's not from the graph or from the gradient, most likely you can't get the information exactly from the graph. Never mind. Let's just go into solving the question. So briefly describe the motion of the object represented by OB, BC, CD, and DE. So why I mentioned the velocity is because um, it's going to help you um, determine the velocity of each motion based on the gradient of each section. You can see over here that the graph has been kind of um, divided into four stages of motion, right? One, two, three, and four. So that's why they also divided the um, question into those sections, O, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E, exactly as uh, written over here on the graph. So when you want to describe um, some, some keywords you should be aware of, I'm just going to indicate over here. It's a, it is a preferred um, method of um, explain, uh, description where you have to use the word constant. Now, that doesn't mean you just say, oh, okay, constant motion. No, constant something. Um, so is it uh, constant? Uh, is it constant velocity or is it constant acceleration? Um, it is good if you could always use the term constant um, to describe the motion, if possible. Now, let's say in a particular motion, there's no uh, constant value, then you can use words like increasing or decreasing. But the preferred one first is constant, followed by increasing and decreasing. Or if um, if that during that situation, also during that motion also, you might find there's no change, then you can say zero something. Now, all these terms must be followed with the um, variable that's changing. So don't just say constant motion. Is it constant velocity or is it constant acceleration? You must specify clearly, right? So I'm going to write the answer over here. Okay, so this is the answer for A. Okay, for OB, you can see that um, the, it's moving, right? Because the displacement has changed and it's at a linear rate. So remember, the gradient is same as the velocity. So for a linear graph, remember that in maths, if you have a linear graph, the gradient is... Um, the same, no matter which two points you take. So you could take the two points, you know, by the bottom, two points uh, on top, two points, uh, you know, far away. Whichever the case is for a linear graph, the gradient is always the same. So that's why in physics, we describe the gradient for a linear graph as constant. So constant gradient. So if we say that the velocity is equal to the gradient, 
and this shows us constant gradient. Therefore, the velocity is constant. So we can write it here as constant velocity. Now, oh, for the next section, you can see that it's flat. So the displacement has not changed, which means it hasn't moved. So you can say that it's not moving. Or you can say, I'm putting a double slash, meaning these are different options. You don't have to write them all. You can choose one of these terms as your answers. Okay? So you can also say at rest, or you can say stationary. Or even if you want to use the word zero, like I mentioned earlier, you can say zero velocity. Okay, okay I got no space, so just uh, yes, go with it. Lah, okay, all right. Now, for the next section, CD, again, you can see how um, the velocity is, again, um, the gradient is constant, therefore, the velocity is also constant. In the case of DE, though, you can see that it's going down, um, which means that it is constant, but negative. So, if you like, you can just indicate it's negative. If it, if it, uh, well, you want to make it more complete, you can also indicate for the others that the velocities are positive, constant. I am going to shift this because it looks so terrible. It looks so bad make it more readable okay ah there we go all right so that's your answers for a so now for b the displacement after seven seconds so over here you can see that um seven seconds are roughly about here so you just and you're looking for displacement this is displacement right so you can read the direct uh, the value directly from the graph that means it's five meters so i'm going to write the answer over here b1 is five meters okay easy peasy lemon squeezy and then the time taken for an object to reach 10 meters here you can take the value directly from the graph so that would be 18 seconds right so no brainer for this one now for c to calculate the average velocity the average velocity Velocity is displacement over time. So you just take the displacement of that section divided by the time in that section. So for example, for C1 between 0 to 5 seconds, okay, the displacement traveled between 0 and 5 is 5 meters. So you take it as 5 meters. I'll just scribble over here first. This would be, for this section, 5 meters divided by 5 seconds. Um, so to make this easier, I'm just going to put an answer directly over here next to um, the answers, you know, so that it's easier for you to associate the numbers. You can see 5 meters divided by 5 seconds. This gives us 1 meter per second. Within the 5 to 10 seconds, it's not moving, right? So velocity is 0. Now, um, when the value is 0, you don't have to write the unit because whether it's 0 meters per second or 0 kilometers per hour, whatever the case is, um, there's, the value is 0. So that's why you don't need to write the unit. For others, you do need to write because if it's one, is it one meter per second? Is it one kilometer per hour? You know, you it, they're very, very different. That's why you must write unit. But zero, whatever the unit is, zero is still zero. Zero meters per second, zero kilometers per hour is still zero. That's why you don't need to write the unit for zero. I'm just going to move this out of the way so that there's space for me to write the answer for three and four. So between 10 to 18 seconds, you can see here that the displacement is not 10. The displacement is only 5 because it's gone up from 5 to 10, which means that for this section, I'm again just going to scribble here. Um, it's Actually, I shouldn't do this, right? Yeah. In fact, this shouldn't be done also. So, sorry, I'm just going to fix this real quick. My bad. Um, this one is 5 meters divided by 5 seconds. So for 10 to 18, therefore, it's 5 meters divided by 8 seconds. All right, and this gives us 0 0.625. Yes, I know I should have done that in my head. <laughs> Malas. 0 0.625 meters per second. I think I'm just going to move this a little bit higher over here. Otherwise, it's just weird, right? Yeah, 0 0.625. And then for the final answer between uh, 18 to 22, um, it's a negative number, so you can see that how it's gone from 10 to 0, so it's actually negative 10 meters over only 4 seconds, right, between 18 and 22, so that's 4 seconds. So that gives us a value of 
negative 2.5 meters per second. And that's how you solve Chonto 6. All right, let's take a look at Chonto 7. So this time, it's a different graph. So remember, every time you see a graph question, the first thing you must do is observe what's on the y and x axis. So they told us the velocity time. That means this is velocity and this is time. Right? Uh, so before we jump into answering this question, these questions, um, again, a reminder of the additional values you can obtain from a velocity time graph. So like how in uh, the earlier question, right? Displacement time, the velocity is the gradient. So for a velocity time graph, the acceleration can be calculated from the gradient and displacement can be obtained from the area under the graph. Just gonna fix it a little bit. Okay. Oops. Okay, so just some quick notes. Um, I'm going to push this higher so that there's space for me to write stuff underneath. Um, just some, some quick notes. I'm just going to create a blank slide here um, just um, so that, you know, I can write the notes. If this helps, you can write it this way. If you can't remember, oh my God, I can't remember what each graph, you know, how do I interpret additional values? Oh no. All right, so here's what you do. Okay, um, you can actually write this down as, uh, you know, like, like, in the exam, that means you don't carry information with you during the exam. During the exam, you can scribble on your paper so that it helps you remember how to interpret the graphs. You write it this way. I'm going to change um, the color first. Okay. You put displacement followed by velocity. And then acceleration. Okay, so when you write it this way, if you can't remember which goes where, okay, use the units to help you then. So displacement, remember, it's like um, distance, right? It's the vector twin of distance. So this is meters. Velocity is like speed, right? So meters per second. Acceleration, meters per second squared. So it's like, start with the base, m, suddenly there's a, there's a one, there's a two. So displacement, velocity, acceleration. Meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. Okay, if you are given a displacement time graph and you had to calculate the velocity, you need to get the gradient. So what this means is that from a displacement time graph, the gradient gives you the velocity. Now, if you have a velocity time graph and you need to get the acceleration, you need to calculate the gradient. So when you move forward or you move to the right, you need to get the gradient. When you move backwards or you move to the left, you need to get the area under the graph. So from a velocity time graph to get the displacement, you need to calculate the area under the graph. All right? And um, therefore, if you have an acceleration time graph to get the velocity, also you count the area under the graph. So normally, in uh, questions, right, uh, in exams, they like to give you displacement time graph and velocity time graphs. Acceleration time graphs are um, not so popular, but you still need to know about them. So anyway, so this is how you can, um, you can use this kind of simple chart to help you remember how to obtain additional uh, interpretations from these kind of graphs, right? Okay, so uh, let's come back to the question, okay. To find the initial velocity, initial velocity means right at the beginning of the motion, right? It's right here. So when time is zero, here's the velocity. So I'm going to write the answer, you know, directly. Whoops, trying to do this. Uh, directly next to the question so that you can see the answer that's associated to that question. So that means the value, of course, here is 5 meters per second. Now I've written m slash s in the Jamboard, but you can write it as m s minus 1. Um, it's because in Jamboard, uh, it's difficult for me to use um, power values or superscript values. That's why I'm writing it m slash s. Easier. But you can write m s minus 1. That's fine. Okay, so when time is 2, again from the graph, you see, oh, it's 0. That's why you can just write it as 0. And at uh, time at 4, it's negative 5. Don't drop the negative. You must write negative when it's vector values, all right? Like velocity. So to solve B, now between 0 to 2 seconds, we know that, okay, for displacement, we need to calculate the area on the graph. So how to count the area under the graph? What this means is you find where the graph is, 
okay, the graph, the the line of the graph, and then at the edges, drop down to the x-axis and look at the shape formed between the x-axis and the line. So you can see over here between zero to two seconds, the shape is a triangle. So what you do is you calculate the area of this triangle. The area of this triangle will give us a displacement between zero and two seconds. So between zero and two seconds, I'll write the answer here. You can see the triangle is half times two times five, which gives you five meters. And that's your answer between zero to two. Now, between two to four, this is the triangle here. Okay, so even though it's uh, stated as area under the graph, but if the graph goes below the x-axis, let me just show you again. If the graph goes below the x-axis, don't think, oh, I go underneath. No, um, area under the graph is just a name to, uh, the term given to, to specify the area which we need to look for. So this was, uh, the name was given based on the idea of a graph that's always positive. But if it's negative, it doesn't mean you still need to go underneath. You still need to go to the x-axis. That means from this graph, look for the x-axis and look for the area that is more uh, boundary. Okay, the boundaries are the graph with the x-axis and of course a straight line. So that's why the graph um, area of the graph is over here, uh, as I've highlighted in green. So for that one, the uh, value of the area, again, it's a triangle, right? So half times base, 2 to 4 is only 2 times height. And this one is negative 5. So you have to leave the negative there because displacement is also a vector. So um, you must specify the direction. So in this case, it's negative 5 meters. Between 0 to 4, let me write the answer here. Between 0 to 4, it's now um, the sum of both. So it's 5 plus negative 5. So 5 minus 5, the answer is 0. So what this tells us is that this object has moved 5 meters that one way, and then it's moved back 5 meters. So it has come back to where it started. That's why the displacement is 0. Answers Answer for C. Now, the question says, uh, the question asks for the acceleration of the object at one second. So if you're wondering, oh, what a strange thing. At one second, it's here. And I, oh, I got to look up the value here. You got to figure it out. <laughs> okay, look, I know it's not difficult, but the thing is you don't need to find the value for um, the velocity at one second. Um, why not? Because remember that, you know, we just discussed, right, that if you have a linear graph, the gradient is constant. So whether you take from here to here, here to here, here to here, whatever the case is, because it's a linear graph, the gradient is constant. So why they give you t at 1 is it's just to specify, you know, it's in the middle of this section. So if you calculate the gradient for this entire line, that would give you the gradient also at t equals 1, which would be the acceleration for the entire area. So you don't need to count the value specifically for one. You just need to count the gradient for the graph, this linear graph where t equals one is in the middle of. That's why I'm not going to take t at one. I'm going to take between zero and two, right? So the calculation in this case, um, you can use a equals v minus u over t, or you can use the gradient. Um, you, you'll get the same answers in, in the end. So anyway, I'm just going to put, I'm going to put in the gradient values. So over here, you have zero uh, minus five, over 2 minus 0, right? And this gives us negative, two, negative 2.5 meters per second squared, right? And that's the answer for the answer uh, for C. Okay, so I hope you have found this video uh, helpful and educational, right? Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can ask me in class if you are my student. Okay, don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe for more lessons and more solutions on solving exercises just like these in uh, various workbooks. I will also be doing uh, questions in other workbooks. For this particular video, I just happen to be focusing on this module and more book, right? Okay, thanks for watching and happy studying.